So you're working the green door at this time, and is it? Just, are you still a one man crew? Nope, I got niggas is coming along now. I got Lou down with me, my man Stanley down with me, my brother down with me, uh, my man Charlie C. You know the hood dude that I grew up with. We all come together. We we making it do what it do. Yeah, Rich, Rich was locked up at that moment around that time. Yeah. So I mean, forty. 40,000, 30,000 a day. What what are you doing with this money? Like how are you money how are you managing it? Are uh saving some, buying cars, jewelry, condos, having fun, buying furs for girls, family, cars. You know, having fun, bro. Basically. Yeah. Doing, doing all the things, looking out for the hood, taking care of the hood, bus rides, Christmas parties. A lot of things, man. Hmm. Yes. Saving a lot of it? Yeah, 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 but no, but yeah, but no. Yeah. You know, having fun, man. Young. Young. Because, I mean, once you get fast money, especially at that young of an age, you think it's always going to come. Especially the way that came. It's like, and being honest, back then it seemed like the police would just ride by and just let you rock, man. We have cheese lines wrapped around the block with customers and the police just ride by. You know what I mean? Like, it's all right. So fuck it. We, ain't, we didn't feel like we were breaking the law. Hmm. Being honest, back then. What's the most you feel like you've made in one day? It was a New Year's Eve. Uh, I had to close down the, the green door. No, what happened here? The, the green door had got little hot, the police watching it. But I had opened up a game room right like three blocks away from the green door. So we started selling drugs out of the game room, which was called the jukebox. So it, all the energy that came from the green door went to the jukebox. So it's now it's like a door's wide open for you to come in. The green door was like a, a basement. Mm -hmm. This door is like you, anybody could walk in. A lot of people don't want to just go in a little basement. So this door made Everybody coming, anybody that wanted to get high, police, uh, firemen, uh, ambulance people, you know, working people would come in like if they were buying candy from a store. So that's what made that spot super, super a money maker. And I think I made like $120,000 in one day in that spot, in that one mm. spot. But I had other spots just as well. I had opened up a spot on 130th between 5th and Lenox, 134th. On 32nd Street, you feel me? And them joints was going like 20, 30, 40, 50 in one day. And that day that, that day that that happened, I never, it was on like on a New Year's Eve. Everybody partying. So niggas, would, instead of buying three or four, they would buy five, 10, they get 20. You know what I mean? And that's how that went. Yeah. I remember uh, listening to an a Alpo interview, and he, just, he said that you always knew your work. You always knew how much each spot was supposed to make and how much work was there. Definitely. Yeah, that was, that was uh, mathematics. It's like, but I think what he was talking about, I knew my material. And I would give you, if I gave you an eighth, I knew how much bottles would come out of that. Where well, you can't say, nah, I was short. I knew it precise. And the material, I knew like if you try to put something on it or in it, try to bring somebody else working in because my material was always the same, the best fish scale. So if there's anything less than that, I know you you playing games. And I ain't, yeah. we ain't beat you up. Just give me my shit, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Stay out of here. Yeah. Now you, 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 you know what I mean? You was making 500 every, not even gonna say 500, making 150 off of every G. And them G packs was moving like this. You can make up to three or 3,000 a day. Now you just killed yourself from that. By trying to steal. You understand? So that's how I played that game. You had to you had to fire people often? Uh once in a while niggas do some foul shit. You know, I'll pull wild out on them, beat them up, try to throw them out of the window, all that crazy yeah. shit that you heard, true story. So a yeah, nigga just basically eventually a nigga just realized that ain't worth it. And they played fit. So before you met Alpo, you were already making 30, 40, 50 a day. Definitely. 
Definitely. Okay. Definitely. I was getting money. I was getting getting money when Rich came home, set him up. But when Rich came home, Alpo was already involved with me. Because Alpo knew Rich before me. And Alpo introduced himself like, yo, I was fucking with Rich. And Rich got locked up. I don't know where to get it from now. And and I put him in. I plugged him in. Rich called me from prison and said, yes, yeah, my man. Look out for him until he came home. And, and when he came home, he was good. We was good. Yeah. Because I guess one time, Gangsta Lou, uh, he kept, I guess Gangsta Lou used to drive your cars. And um, uh, one day Alpo seen him and he was like, yo, where are you getting these cars from? And then Gangsta Lou was like, man, I'm, I'm getting them from Uptown, man. And Gangsta Lou was the guy. Well, Gangsta Lou says in multiple interviews that he introduced Alpo to you. Um, to my knowledge, no disrespect to what Gangsta Lou saying. You know, he may. I met Alpo. Like I said, he approached me and was telling me that he was down, he knew Rich, bah, 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 bah. That's the first time. Now, if Lou brought him around, it's my man, okay, cool. But I might have knew him before that, if you understand what I'm saying. I'm not knocking what Lou said. Lou used to have my cars, drive any one he want, do what the fuck you want. Wherever you want to go, is no, you know what I mean? But yeah, so I, I'm not saying yes, that didn't happen, but I'm, to my knowledge, that's how I met Alpo, if mm. you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, and Gangsta Lou is somebody that uh, he says he he's been knowing you since he was. He said one day he was uh working in this apartment building, moving some of your work, and you walked up to him, <laughs> and um, I guess you like. You said uh he didn't know you were A Z at the time, but you walked up to him and you was like uh I need some of this I need some of this A Z work, and then. He was like, here, I got some. And then I guess he said he was making 300 a week. And then you was like, man, fuck that. Come work, come work for me. I think he, I think what he was trying to say, like, he was selling some work for somebody else. Exactly. But he was telling the customer, this is AZ shit. Oh, uh, okay. You understand? Like, this is AZ shit. This is AZ. And when I walked up, your fan, what you doing? Oh, I got AZ work. Well, let me see. That ain't my shit, homie. I'm AZ. Oh, word. Who you, okay. Who you selling that shit for? Blah, blah, blah. Stop selling that shit. You want the real shit? I bet. Mm. And that's how that went down. So the so your work was so good, niggas was in the street saying it was your work. Of course. Of course. How you gonna get it off? They come and look for AZ shit. You got AZ shit? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, but if I, you know, don't do that, bro, don't do that. And eventually they came on board. Yeah. It was competition with none. This is how it really was, bro. True story. Other cats, you know, they get money, got their little bottles going, but their workers, their workers used to come by for me to put a hit on it and it still be strong and they could bottle it up and sell it where they selling it at. You understand? They come and spend like four, five hundred with me to buy my shit. You understand? That's a true story. Back then, how many? I I can only imagine so many people wanted that Lulu Connect, right? For sure. What did you do to protect that? Basically, tell them don't fuck with nobody but me, man. I got this. If a nigga bringing you duffel bags of money, you don't want all those headaches. I'm not fucking up a dime. Even if I give a nigga some work and he fuck it up, that ain't Lulu business. I put the money in and I pay him. So he ain't never, it was never no loss for me. Everything was on time and always on point. So why would you fuck that up? I fuck with another nigga that might come fuck up our frequency. Then a beef might come, you know what I mean? Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. You understand? And Lulu was loyal like that with me. So where was Gangsta Lou at? It involved in all this because he 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 wasn't really in the paid in full well he wasn't in the paid in full movie at all. 
He's so, not, listen, he's not in the paid in full movie per se, like name Gangster Lou. But any one of them characters that was with me could have been Lou. Got you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how I look at that. Yeah. Because you can't, because you can't say Charlie, I can't name everybody. You got to name the, the three main characters in the film. You understand? AZ, Alpo, Rich, Donnell, you know, the ones that the story is going to unfold around. You can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't get mad at that. It's just, you know, stop. Yeah. What's your relationship like now? Um, if I see him, we still good, but I just don't indulge in the streets like that anymore. You know how you, you grow past things? Mm. Spiritually, yeah. you, spiritually, you see different. You understand, you know what I mean? Right from wrong, on from off. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck how much money is involved. If it don't make sense, I'm not fucking with it. Point blank, period. You feel me? You good. Like, you know what I mean? I come yeah. to understand that there's more power and peace, man. If you understand what I mean. I, I can't deal with... I just can't deal with yesterday, man. Yeah, no, I respect it. No, no disrespect. Um, it's just... I separate myself. I drew a line. I drew a line. I'm not with that no yeah. more, that world. And that's it. Yeah, it's growth, since, man. Since, I respect it. Since 1993. Right. You understand? Being honest. Yeah, yeah and I asked that because I, I seen an interview with Gangsta Lou from a few years back, and he was just like, you know, he didn't bail me out, this, this, and that. He didn't do this for me. Stop, he stop, didn't stop. Do that for me. Stop, stop. Listen, I never, never, if a nigga went to jail on my watch, this is facts, had a good lawyer. My lawyer will go get you immediately and get you out. Facts. Anything that ever went to jail on my watch got him out the next day on my watch. Now, years later, I ain't fucking with, with fucking with you. You do what you do. I don't know what you're doing, bro. So for you to say you never went to jail on my watch, never. Never. Huh? My shit was set up. Nobody Holly went to jail on my watch the way it was set up. It may be one time we got busted. That was my brother. Got him out, lawyer. You feel me? That's that. So I don't understand where that be coming from, being honest. 